Awesome. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming into our session today. Um, we're really excited to be talking about eco action organizing in Florida, how to lead eco events and a chance to apply for funding. So um, my name is Caroline Tremanix. I am the Chief Operations Officer of Ideas for Us. Um, I'm joined here by Kristen Anderson, who is our branch manager, who leads all of our eco action programming throughout our 13 different branches of Ideas for Us internationally and domestic. Um, so Ideas for Us is a um, environmental nonprofit that basically um, develops funds and scales environmental solutions to the world's most pressing environmental and social challenges. So what that means is that every single month, our nonprofit is developing eco action projects and educational events. So then we can better um, our communities and advance sustainability. So that's why exactly we felt so called and excited to talk about this topic today, because we have an opportunity to um, educate you all on the topic, but also to have you apply for funding. We have a small funding pool that we would love to um, get you um, uh, all queued up to apply for with us and um, to make some real change happen in our communities. Um, again, during this presentation, if you would like to ask questions or share any comments or anything like that, um, you can go ahead and do so by um, writing in the chat um, or whenever we have our specific sessions, please come on camera, please make your voice heard. We would love to hear from you. Um, with Ideas for Us, um, we break down all of our eco action projects into um, five pillars or focus areas of sustainability, ecology, water, energy, food, and waste. Um, and the reason that we do that is because it can be hard to kind of identify the needs of a community, but when you kind of break it down into that, it helps you to conceptualize the different things that you can get involved with with your group. Um, our Ideas High program is our baby. That is our educational aspect of Ideas for Us. So if you want to check out Ideas for Us Orlando, that's our flagship branch, please go ahead and do that. We also have an urban agriculture program called Fleet Farming. That is a really great example of what a community group can come together to accomplish, turning front and back lawns into farms. Um, and everything that we do, do aligns with the UN sustainability goals, kind of as a rough guideline for us to be able to um, push forward action in our community. So I would like to start off with this question for you all. So um, what are the needs within your community? What are the issues that you see? Are you seeing waterways that be lakes and retention ponds being mowed all the way down to the water line so there's no room for habitat for any animals? Are you seeing a lack of trees? Are you seeing that there's pollution, that there's trash? Are you seeing that you're just sad about the, um, the lack of local food available in your community? What is it? And start to identify those needs. You can start to write them down um, if you are taking some notes, but what are the needs within your community? You can think about them on a scale of energy, water, food, waste, or ecology, or maybe even some other indicators that you have. So I think that that's the big part is just identifying what you would like to see change and how we can get it done. Let's do it. Let's plant trees. Let's plant native plants throughout our community. Let's encourage renewable energy because we can do that. And especially when we have a big group of people um, that we can um, grow over time to be able to do, be our eco action organizers, right? Um, so when we talk about the need behind environmental projects, something that might come up is the topic of climate change. Um, which is a multifaceted um, part of our uh, issues that we have here in the beautiful state of Florida. And that can mean different things based on where you are in the state, right? Um, and um, if each communi community works to solve global problems with their local solutions, the climate crisis will be solved by individuals coming together to create change and demanding action for leaders and corporations. Each individual makes an impact on the planet and it's up to you whether um, it's positive or negative. And I totally agree with that. Sometimes, you know, we can feel very disconnected as a society. I think after, um, you know, 2020, we can feel that a little bit more deeply than we have in the past of just how much we need each other and just how much we can do when we actually come together. So let's get really hyped and inspired during this presentation to go out and to do good. Um, in Florida, there's a lot to be done. So when we talk about water quality and conservation, there's a slew of different events that you can do focused on that. 
Um, also, when we think about extreme weather events, like hurricanes, um, extreme heat. These are some climate change uh, related topics that are kind of going around the state of lack of local food systems. We have some endangered animals. How do we help them? Pollution, how do we push forward um, fossil fuel? Because we're, I'm not sorry, not push forward fossil, push aside fossil fuel and push forward renewable energy. Ooh, I saved that one. Um, because we would love to see more renewable energy within the beautiful state of Florida, including solar. Um, how do we fight urban sprawl? How do we protect the work of farm workers and other individuals who may experience environmental justice? And there's so many, um, uh, there's so many issues that are also on top of all of this that we can do something about, right? Even on a small scale. So when we look at the state of Florida, we can identify challenges and solutions um, based on these focus areas. And today we're going to dive into some eco action projects that you can quickly um, uh, and easily do within all of these different areas. So welcome everybody who is joining the call. We're just now getting into the conversation on eco action organizing and um, what that actually looks like. So here's some examples. We've broken them down into the ca categories um, identified earlier um, to talk about energy, water, food, waste, and ecology, whether that's solar workshops, shoreline projects, urban agriculture, waste audits, or even tree plantings or more. Um, we're gonna get into this together. Um, awesome. So I'm gonna pass on the torch to Ms. Kristen Anderson. Again, Kristen's job with Ideas for Us is pretty cool. It's to lead eco action projects throughout 13 branches, three in Florida and the rest in Africa, Asia and Europe. Um, and we are based here in Orlando, Florida as our headquarters. So it's her job to plan these events. So she's a wealth of knowledge and I'm so excited to give her the floor to talk about some specifics of our projects um, that we have the opportunity to lead in Florida. Yeah, thank you so much, Caroline. Um, my job is pretty amazing being able to organize all these events with an amazing team of organizers. Um, but what I want to make very clear to you all is anybody can do this. You don't have to have this job. Any individual or group can make this happen um, in their own community. Um, and even if you're in the Orlando community, we need a bunch of initiatives happening just like this all over the place. Um, and so we're here to help mobilize you to do the same thing. Um, and so just to break it down into a step-by-step -step process uh, from the big picture, always having a team of change makers and organizers to work together is so, so important. And there's so many people out there who are like-minded that wanna make this change happen. You just need to find a strong team that can come together to identify a need and a problem in the community. So it's simple as creating a group to talk about this and identify the needs, and then also identifying a solution that you can implement. Um, and this could be whether it's free or a small budget, we're gonna kind of get into both of those things, but identifying a need and identifying a solution with your team is the first and most important step. And then delegating responsibilities for uh, the steps of the solution implemented, making a very clear and organized plan to actually make it happen. And then of course, the most fun part, carrying out that solution. Um, and so here are some great ideas for some free educational project ideas. Educational events are usually free events. And so you wanna pump them out as much as possible because education is the first and most important step into implementing these solutions. Um, and so once again, we've kind of broken it down into the pillars of sustainability. So you can educate the community on reducing your waste and how to shop responsibly or how to grow your own food in their own homes. Um, talking about really serious issues like habitat destruction and how to not support businesses that are doing this in, uh, horrible work. Um, and then also um, energy, energy consumption and just ways that people can individually make a difference. Um, with their wallet or with their own individual actions. Um, and then you wanna to go to the next slide. Um, there's also action projects that you can do. So every month we try and educate our community through as many um, educational events and workshops as possible, but we don't wanna stop there. We want to give people the opportunity to take hands on action. Um, so like I said, education is important, but it's not the only uh, need that we have. You can also do either a free to a very low budget different eco action project opportunities. And so here are a few examples. Um, there's community cleanups, um, how to recycling signage in public spaces. It's simple as printing out some signs and asking if you can put them up just to help people visualize what they can and can't work. 
um, waterway cleanups, a rain barrel irrigation. Um, it's really great to pool in resources from different groups as well. Um, so if you don't have everything that you need, maybe you can ask another uh, local farm or nonprofit and you can put your heads together and resources together to make a really cool project essentially for free. Um, covering windows for energy or a climate strike for climate action, which is, like I said, as simple as bringing in uh, a group of like-minded individuals to create a common goal. Uh, pollinator bombs, educating schools um, to use different search engines. For example, Ecosia, every time you search, if you do 45 searches, it plants a tree. So it's as simple as changing their basic search engine. Um, to weekly table and compost drop off. So these are just a couple of ideas for free to super low budget um, events, but we're also gonna kind of talk about how to make each of these happen in the upcoming slides. Yeah, and I'd like to just mention too, whenever you're doing your educational events um, from the previous slide, you can always partner with a local nonprofit like Ideas For Us or uh, a local expert that's in that topic to have maybe like a Facebook Live conversation or a closed Zoom group conversation, whatever you're comfortable in. So then you have that subject matter expert talking directly with your students or your group, your community leaders. So then that education is kind of at that higher level of understanding. And you can ask an expert basic questions that you have. And even in the low budget um, ideas that we have listed here, um, there's ways that you could scale it up or scale it back. There's ways that you can make some of this free if you have enough materials. So if you want any project specific questions, um, it would be great for you to email us at admin at ideasforus.org and we can talk it out with you. Um, but also in the end of the presentation, when you we're gonna share information about um, you applying through us to be able to um, apply for funding, um, you can describe your project in full in our application as well. So we'll have more about that later on. Yeah, thank you so much. It's so, so important to work with other organizations to make this happen um, because really the whole reason why Ideas for Us exists in the first place is because we saw that everybody was doing this work in silos and it was way more efficient to be coming together to do this work together and no one owns eco action. It's better when you know you have a cool project and you invite other groups to do it with you. Um, and so I'd like to reiterate what Caroline said for every eco action project and educational event because you know, pull your resources and pull your knowledge will make a better project. Um, so we're going to get into each of these projects, how to do these. Um, like Caroline said, it can be free, it could be low budget. Um, so we'll get into how to make each one of these happen. Um, so we're going to start with waste cleanups. These are always really popular and really fun events because, you know, you're getting outside, connecting with the planet and doing a visually, obviously a good thing. And you can see how much waste was displaced at the end of the day. Um, so I think the most important thing is finding a needy location, um, and you can do that by asking local groups that are doing this waste removal and beautification process in your community what spaces are in need. Um, most counties or cities have a keep community name beautiful. So for example, keep Orlando beautiful um, is what we have here, and they know all of the spaces that need help. So you can just ask them if they have any ideas. Um, and if it is a beach, a beach cleanup is very popular. You can ask that location to not comb the park the night before, because what that does is it removes all the rack lines or the seaweed, which destroys an ecosystem. And if you're gonna be removing the plastic anyway, um, they don't need to do that. Um, just make sure to be organized and prepared, collect materials. So if you have buckets, bags, gloves, or trash pickers, make sure to have those. And if you don't, make sure that volunteers are aware of that and they can bring their own. Uh, if you don't have these supplies, you can ask local groups to partner with you. So for example, you can ask Ideas for Us to partner with you on a beach cleanup because we have supplies, or you can ask Keep Orlando Beautiful, Keep Brevard Beautiful. If they have those supplies that you can borrow, I just recommend that you let them know either where you're gonna be doing it, if it's not in that community or asking the community um, of that you're doing it in for their supplies. Um, and for volunteers, like I said, co-host with one or two other volunteer groups so that you can get as many people there out as possible and collaborate with them and just being able to interact with more like-minded people. Mm -hmm. uh, have water and supplies for each volunteer. Be very clear about what you have and what you don't have to volunteers. People just want opportunities to do good. So don't be embarrassed if you don't have trash pickers and buckets. Uh, people just want to come out and have a good time either way. And also you can, if the park has a uh, 
expensive parking or parking fees at all, you can ask them for free parking for volunteers. Nine out of 10 times, they say, yeah, absolutely. How many do you need? Um, and so beach cleanups are some of the most fun and easy projects that you can do. You can do a beach cleanup bingo, which is really fun. So every time you find a uh, utensil, a toothbrush, a straw, you can check it off and whoever has it first gets a prize. I love that. Um, I love that idea. Also, I'll add trash bags for cleanups is like a thing of the past. Now that what we're using is reusable bags or buckets. Um, so then we're not adding to the plastic waste. Um, and Absolutely. usually we'll add a canopy too, just in case someone gets overwhelmed by the sun. You can do these at beach, at springs, at different parks and forests. So um, you can kind of take this model and add it into other places. Awesome. And then another great idea is if you ran out of ideas for a different project or something, or even if you just want to help out another group, you can find another uh, group that is doing something that you care about and just ask if you can bring volunteers to their event because people love it when you do that. And it's same thing as co-hosting, you know, you're really coming together to achieve a common goal. Um, something that we did was we went to an affordable housing facility and gave out, gave out food to food insecure individuals. And it was such a great experience. I highly recommend it. It doesn't necessarily have to be affordable housing. It can also be a community garden. You can ask if your group can come and volunteer for that. Um, local homeless shelters, animal shelters, there's so many groups doing amazing work. Um, and you can just come and help them out by bringing a group of volunteers. Um, but definitely be very clear to the people organizing it, how many volunteers you're planning on bringing. Don't overstep, you know, just be very communicative and respectful of their space. Um, and it's going to be a great relationship that you can do um, ongoing in the future. And it can also include becoming a co-host for volunteer events where both uh, groups are achieving a goal. You can contribute something or you can just attend as a group together. Um, and so you can also do it with different lab groups, which is really cool at UCF specifically. There's this one lab that does um, oyster mats and we were able to go and help them make hundreds of oyster mats. And it was just us bringing volunteers to help them do their work. Great pictures, really fun time. We learned a lot about oysters. Um, so these are some of the best events um, that we've been able to do and they weren't even our events. So highly recommend checking out different local groups that you agree with their goals and that you want to help them achieve their goals as well. Um, a pollinator bomb workshop is super fun because this is one of those events where it's very educational, very hands-on, and you get your hands dirty. Um, and so basically a pollinator bomb is a clump of soil and clay and seeds. Um, and so you bring everybody together and you have a chance to educate them on uh, local pollinator plants, pollinator insects, and the need for this work. So you have the educational aspect um, but then you also go ahead and teach them how to create the bombs themselves. Just make sure that everybody's very comfortable with what they're doing. The directions are clear. You're going around helping everybody understand it and make sure everyone's comfortable with it. Um, if you want to go ahead and buy the supplies, um, you can ask everybody that comes for a $2 donation to cover it. Um, or you can ask the suppliers for free donations. Say, hey, I'm doing a community event. Would you mind donating some clay or some pollinator seeds to us? more likely than not, people will donate to the cause. Um, and just make sure that you're doing your research and using Florida native plants um, and seeds and also having correct information in your educational event. Um, just a tip for any event across the board, but make sure to find locations months in advance so that you can start advertising. Once again, try and find a partner with local groups. And if you're trying to find volunteers, you can ask other groups to advertise for your events because they will absolutely do that for you. Um, if, especially if they're like-minded and make sure to make colorful graphics with photos of pollinators to really attract people to the event. I'll also add to that, if you're in the Central Florida community um, or in, in anything in general, you can always email us at adventideasforus.org. We have a list of pollinator um, friendly plants that we would recommend. We have our favorite list of wildflowers. So if you need more specifics on that, just reach out and we'd love to share that. Yeah, and to answer the question in the chat, um, so a platform to find other groups events, another uh, one that we use is Eventbrite, which is really awesome. They have a bunch of um, various types of events, whether it's volunteer or paid events, um, and also just Facebook groups like Florida Climate Action. You can see everybody's different posts on there. 
Um, even just looking up environmental groups in Orlando, you can see what everybody's doing. Ideas for us, we often try and promote other people's events as it's happening. Um, so for example, today I posted something for Keep Orlando Beautiful. Um, so Facebook is definitely the best. You can look up hashtags on Instagram, um, but Eventbrite, I think is a newer platform that people are using more often. So especially if you're trying to get people to come out to your event, definitely use Eventbrite so that you can keep track of specifically how many people are mm -hmm. coming. Because when people say they're going on Facebook, what does that even mean? So Eventbrite is like, I signed up for this and I'm going to come. And then you have their email so you can communicate with them and send them confirmations. Um, but yeah, great, great, great question. Um, an upcycling workshop is super fun. We've done several of these. It's a great opportunity to divert waste um, and also be a little crafty and creative. So what upcycling means is turning trash into treasures. Um, so these are some ideas, t-shirts into tote bags, glass bottles into vases. You can look up a whole bunch of different ideas on Instagram, Pinterest, or just Google. Um, and definitely utilize social media to collect items from the public. Even if they're not coming, you can be like, can you give us your trash so that we can turn it into useful items um, and encourage volunteers to bring their old supplies and also find their own crafts that they can do at the event that even if we weren't planning on doing it. Um, have paint and different crafts available so people can really beautify whatever they're making um, and just create a fun environment with music, trivia questions, environmental prompts for attendees to engage in. Um, and another idea that we added at the bottom that's also a free event is a swap shop. We just had one of these. It was so much fun. So great. And people bring their old clothes and then you can find new clothes that, from other people that they brought and pretty much redo your entire closet sustainably. And that was a really fun event that we're going to be doing another one in August. So if anybody wants to co-host, please let us know. We would love to do that with you. Yeah, and basically that just means people bringing all their clothes that they want to donate um, and everyone brings it in one place. You organize it into sections and then you go shopping and it's so fun to have, you know, a whole set of new clothes in your wardrobe totally for free. And um, it's, it's something that people, everybody brings something to. So it's kind of like a potluck in that sense. Um, and it's a really fun um, event to have if you're looking for like no budget. Mm hmm um, and another low budget event, like Caroline was saying, is uh, different workshops. So basically find an important topic that relates to an issue in the community. There are some ideas, renewable energy, electric cars. These are always important ones to talk about. Um, and basically just inviting a local expert to educate your audience on that topic and have them lead the discussion. You know, if you wanna do more of a conversation style, you can do that or you can make it a presentation, but it's always good to make sure that you're having somebody who knows what they're talking about in the room to answer questions, lead discussion, and also do a great presentation. Um, and then what we like to do is afterwards, after talking about it, because these conversations can be doom and gloom sometimes, um, have attendees discuss how to solve this problem and how can we actually do something about it in our community. And then you get more ideas for different eco action projects that you can actually implement. And I'll also mention that, you know, energy can be something that's difficult to make a project based on if you don't have that big of a budget. So if you mm -hmm. have the conversation about all these different things, you can dive into the topic without having to shell out thousands of dollars to install, install like a, a solar panel, for instance. Um, and even there's some advocacy work that you could do with energy related to, you know, promoting um electric car charging stations, which is actually really important if we're going to transition to electric cars at one time. Um, also, Rethink Energy Florida, um, and specifically Susan Glickman is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to energy. So um, those are some resources I would definitely look into if like that's your thing that you wanna have a conversation about or eco action projects regarding. Awesome. And so now we're going to kind of talk about high impact, which also is a euphemism for a little bit more expensive, um, but they are higher impact. So you can find different projects that you want to do and we'll kind of get into a few of them. So community composting is really great. Um, storm drain mesh systems, lawn care restrictions, you know, it can go from actually implementing a project to going to your decision makers and saying we need to work together to implement this solution. Uh, community gardens, trends of permaculture, reforestation, shoreline restorations, pollinator gardens in degraded areas, and also just mobilizing different groups in eco action projects like this. So there's so many different opportunities really based on the needs of your community, but we'll kind of get into specifics of a few high impact ones that we like to do. 
And so as we said before, it really does range based on your capacity. Um, so if you only have $500, you can make it a smaller scale project, but if you have $5,000, you can just scale up. So all of these you can really do in any capacity based on your budget. Uh, it just would depend on how large the project would be. So the first one we're gonna talk about is how to plan a tree planting. Um, and so finding a location is something that you can do by either talking to your local parks department if you wanna do a public space, or you can talk to local nonprofits and any group that has property if you want to do a private space. So we have done both. We've worked with both um, the Orange County Parks Department to do public tree plantings right here is at the Katie Way Trail. This picture of Caroline planting a pine tree. Great, great project. We love doing that. We planted 85 trees. And then we also love doing uh, fruit tree plantings at local nonprofits um, because that's not only helping the ecosystem, but it's also providing food for the people that uh, live and work there and also giving them an opportunity to educate themselves on native fruit trees and get their hands dirty. And those are really, really incredible events. Um, you also wanna support local nurseries with a great track record, making sure to always plant native trees, especially with native fruit trees as well, because then they need less maintenance. Um, you also wanna make sure, I don't think we put this in here, but uh, consider the longevity of the trees because you don't want to go somewhere, plant a bunch of fruit trees and then make them take care of them. So you wanna have some sort of opportunity to, for irrigation or um, maintenance so that the, lo the longevity of the partnership can also be maintained. Um, always create a sign-up form, limiting the number of volunteers so that everybody at least has one tree to plant. You don't wanna have 40 people come out when you only have 20 trees. It would still be a great event, a great opportunity, but it's still more fun to just have uh, plenty of trees for all of the volunteers. And you always wanna offer refreshments, water and shade um, to all of the volunteers, just to make sure that everybody's happy, satisfied, and also you want to make it educational, talking about the need for this work and why you're doing it in those specific locations as well. Mm -hmm. And the size of trees can vary. We would recommend to do like maybe three gallon or seven gallon trees. Um, they're less uh, expensive, easier to move. Um, we use Central Florida Land and Timber as our tree provider, they're in Mayo, Florida, which is about like four hours away. Um, but when you work with local groups um, like us, um, you can share the delivery cost. So that might be something that if you wanted to buy trees and a couple other groups wanted to buy trees too, you could um, share that, that delivery when they come to your, your area. Um, so there's different ways to go about that. And trees can, um, the cost of trees, it can be $5, $6, or more depending on the size. Um, and we typically like to plant um, live oaks, longleaf pines, loblolly pines. Um, but if you wanted to do a fruit tree version of this, you could totally do it too, but the cost of the trees will come up significantly because fruit trees are a lot more expensive than the Florida native plant varieties. Um, and if you have questions on any of that, Kristen is planning um, a ton of different tree opportunities and has led them. So you can reach out to her too with any questions on that. Oh, and one more thing is watering. Um, water bags could be used if you know that you're not going to access the property very often. You can fill up water bags with water and plant them around it. Um, if not, if you work with someone like the county, um, like Kristen said, they'll take care of it and help to water it as part of their um, grounds management. Yeah, so you can notice on the budget too. So if you have like maybe 3000 or more, then I would recommend doing a public space with working with the parks department. Then you can have a bigger budget for more trees because if you only have a budget for like 20 trees, the parks department might um, have to contribute a little bit more. Um, so if you only have a budget of 1000 to 2000, fruit tree plantings are definitely the way to go. Um, and now for a shoreline restoration project. So always find a location in need, which is a lot of locations, of course. Um, you can work with the county or a restoration group that already does work with the county. Um, you always wanna make sure that you have permission. I know that it seems like they wouldn't mind if you went and planted a bunch of uh, shoreline plants rogue, but you definitely don't wanna step on any toes in this work. Um, and so working with the county, you might need some permits, but there are groups that already work under the county to do these shoreline restoration projects so you can just work alongside them so that you don't have to get permitting yourself. For example, serve Seminole 
uh, County Education Restoration Volunteer Group. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. Um, but they do a lot of shoreline restoration projects. And so we're working alongside them using the budgets that we have to do shoreline restoration projects together. Um, also, you can work on private property if you don't wanna worry about permitting at all. So schools, churches, other nonprofit groups that do have a shoreline restoration project, I mean, a shoreline area here is at UCF. So they already have the whole system um, available for shoreline restoration. So anytime that we have a budget for a shoreline restoration project, we usually work with the amazing team from the Arboretum and their um, land resource group to um, restore all of their shorelines. You also definitely want to consult local experts on which plants would be the best for a specific ecosystem and within that season because it always varies based on the shoreline, um, the types of different plants that are already there, the season, the soil, the pH of the water and the soil. There's a lot of different things that I'm not an expert in. And so we work with other groups also to support them and um, to get their expertise. And of course, you always want to use native plants that have the highest cleansing property for the water and carbon sequestration. At the end of the day, that is the goal to actually restore that ecosystem. So definitely do your research on which plants would be the most efficient for that. You can utilize a bulk native grower. There are a lot of them here in Central Florida, um, not too far away, with a lot of different price variations based off of what you're looking for. And it's not that expensive just to get 100 native shoreline plants. They're actually pretty cheap, usually going about 50 cents for a small um, per plant, but that goes quickly. So mm -hmm. it does not across the board with the tree planting. So you definitely want um, more than one plant per person because it takes two seconds to put that in the ground. And ensure all volunteers are aware they need water, res water resistant clothes and shoes because it's very messy. Um, and it's happened before where volunteers came in like moccasins or something and they were not aware that this would be a very messy but very fun event. Great for the summer. It's hot, you know, you want to splash around in the water and the mud a little bit. So definitely recommend shoreline restoration projects over tree plantings during the summer for the sheer reason of very hot temperatures in Florida. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to do this kind of event, you can kind of screenshot this slide as well. There's a couple things that you need to like look into before you decide to do a project like this. Um, and um, just some of the plants that we've chosen to do for these types of projects are like um, golden canna, um, duck potato, pickerel weed, um, lizard tail, uh, blue flag iris. These are all different types of plants that you can plant in a lot of different aquatic settings. Remember that shoreline restoration can mean things like littoral zone plantings or um, lakeshore rehab rehabilitation. There's a lot of different words for it as well. Awesome. And then also how to plan food cycling systems. These are really great because they're super high impact because food waste is uh, obviously horrible because of the waste aspect, but also it ends up producing way more methane if it does go to the landfill. Um, so composting and food repurposing is not only helping, you know, humanitarian issues, food insecurity, but also reducing that impact on the planet. Um, so if you want to do a compost system, you can work with uh, community entities, so schools, community centers, and malls to see if they can start small once a week. Maybe they can compost or collect all of their food waste from a few different places. Um, and then create a plan to drop it off at a composting center. So you'll also need to find a composting program. So here we have O-Town Composting. Charlie Peely did this with us at UCF and it was such a great program and it ended up um, being a research opportunity to uh, argue for long-term composting at UCF. Um, and so a lot of communities will have this, whether it's at a farm or different entities, but a lot of them will have it. You just have to research it. So you'll wanna find the composting group and the entity that will have the food waste. And then you start small with a once a week drop off pickup, and then hopefully it will turn into an ongoing system. And then just make sure it's um, an educational informational graphics to let the community know how they can compost on their own and also how to properly compost um, with the system that you set up. Even if you wanted to do it by yourself, you could just collect food waste at a monthly farmer's market for the people that are walking around and then use it as an educational opportunity and um, revert probably 20 pounds a month, which is a great place to start. Also, uh, food repurposing 
It's a really great way to um, reduce food insecurity as well. There's something called the Food Recovery Network where you take food from a um, restaurant at the end of the day that is good food and you just take it to a homeless shelter or a place that uh, feeds food insecure people. Um, and so pretty much all you have to do is just be the spark that initiates the middleman between the food waste and the opportunity for how you can revert, divert that waste. Um, so you always wanna have a nice group of volunteers so that you can share the labor of transporting this food, composting it or picking it up and dropping it off as well. Um, and how to plan a community garden. Um, and so this can happen in so many different shapes and forms. So Caroline, you can definitely help me with this because you are the expert, but basically you'll wanna find a local nonprofit or community that has a need for the, has the land and a need for a garden. Um, work with the property owners and garden builders to plan an ideal garden with the best plan for harvest and how the food will be utilized. You don't wanna have a garden without a place to use that food. Invite the community to join in building the garden because that is free labor and a really, really fun opportunity for the community to get involved in it and the, equip them to learn how to make and grow their own food. Always use native plants that's across the board for all of these events um, and they don't that don't need much tending to. So especially in Florida, we have a lot of incredible plants that don't even need a lot of maintenance that will just grow and produce food sometimes all year long and ensure the longevity and upkeep of the garden. Um, you never wanna plant a garden and then leave it up to the property owners. You wanna have a plan and a system for how it's going to be maintained. Totally, and so there's different ways that this can look. If you really have a budget, like I'm talking like thousands of dollars, you can do a beautiful raised bed version of this where it's nice, nice and tidy raised beds where everybody can be assigned a bed or half a bed or however you wanna go about this. Um, but if you have smaller budgets too, fruit orchards are a great idea. So what we talked about earlier with planting trees, um, you can have that like an orchard style community garden. Um, the maintenance of trees is a lot less. It's just watering versus like the management of raised, um, raised beds. Um, also in the picture, there's these like felt, um, felt planters that you could have as like a little community garden if you wanted like a miniature version of that where people could be assigned the different felt beds. Um, you could do it where it's in ground rows of crops like we do with fleet farming. Um, but there's a lot of different options that you can do with the community garden. We build them through um, our edible landscape service of fleet, uh, fleet farming in the Central Florida community. Um, and we also help to fundraise those types of projects. So if you're interested in that, um, you can reach out to us. We've installed over 18 school gardens and even more um, community and uh, different gardens like for women's rehabilitation centers or veterans um, centers. So it's a really great opportunity to um, have people come together for a common goal and to socialize too, because we are living in a world where we're not really socializing as much. So if you have an idea for this, let's make it happen. Um, whether it's on a smaller scale or at a larger scale, um, we're here as a resource for you too. Awesome. And then how to plan a solar install. Um, so we always recommend working with other local groups to apply for a small, a small solar grant because like we said, solar is a little bit more pricey, but it doesn't always have to be. Um, but if you are looking for funding from a grant, it is, even, whether it's solar or anything, it's always more beneficial to apply on behalf of multiple groups um, because, you know, the funder will be like multiple people are being held accountable for this. This is actually definitely going to happen and we're not going to lose sight of the money because multiple people are involved. Um, and if you're, it's, if it's small scale, you can find a local street light, phone charging mm -hmm. station or something to energize and you can just add a small solar panel with a battery and it's very um, fun to do. You can make it educational and it's pretty high impact. Or if you want to do large scale, you can do solar powered bathrooms, refrigerators, irrigation systems or composters. Um, we're trying to do a solar powered irrigation, or, sorry, refrigerator and composter um, in our gardens for our produce as well. Um, we definitely always recommend working with a local solar nonprofit or a solar company to plan and purchase the panels and batteries. So as you can see, a reoccurring theme in all of these is working with people who know what they're talking about. Yes. <laughs> um, because, you know, there's no way you can know everything about everything. So, you know, working with experts in each subject area just helps the process be so much easier. You learn along the way and you also get to um, mobilize these people who are experts in it.
-hmm. And then, of course, make a plan for long-term maintenance. Um, and you want to continuously apply for funding for upscaling or just maintenance of the project as well. And then always invite the community to the solar installation and utilize it as an opportunity to educate the audience because solar is an industry that we're moving towards quickly, which is amazing. Um, and people are a little bit afraid of it because they don't understand it. So using these installations to educate the community on how we are moving towards this and how they can be a part of it is really incredible because it not only helps people um, hopefully get it themselves, but also creates jobs in the long run as well. So just to reiterate, you know, going over the basics, choose a project that you care about um, that has an impact that will matter and based on the needs of your community, find a location, find a partner group or a volunteer team, ensure all logistics are planned with the team and everyone's in that conversation, advertise the event at least one month before ideally and have other groups share it to get the word out there and then execute the event, record metrics, which is very important so you can share the impact that you have made. So basically how many trees planted and how many people came, et cetera, and take action-oriented photos so that you can inspire more action like this. Um, and then running a high impact event, it's pretty much all of those things plus more logistics. You know, where are the supplies being sourced? The location, the target group being engaged. Um, you people will more likely fund a project if it's involved mobilizing the youth or creating jobs. Um, create a proposal addressing the need for the project and how you're going to satisfy this need. That's always very important in all proposals. Make a detailed description, methodology, and budget. Reach out to local companies, businesses, and organizations and ask for support. You can say, we'll give you credit. It doesn't matter. We just want the work to get done. Um, if they can't offer financial support, ask them to advertise and share the message. Um, offer advertising and um, financial receipts um, if they do donate uh, for the implementation of the project. Um, seek grants and funding for the projects and work with other groups to do that. Um, many grants fund individuals and small initiatives. So if you're just one person trying to make this project happen, you can definitely find funding opportunities out there for you. Always advertise your projects via social media and execute the project, record the metrics and take photos and have a really great time because this is so necessary that we have more projects like this. And we're really excited that you guys are interested in doing this and we're hopefully excited to do it alongside you as well. Totally. Play music too. Um, and remember, we're going um, to the sec session where we're going to be talking about the funding opportunity too. Mm -hmm. So if you have a project in mind, we can share this presentation if you need more um, details after. Um, communications is a, some key uh, things to consider. Creating a Facebook event is like a must. We always have Facebook events and remember that's how people could easily co-host them. It's like a button that's in Facebook so it'll show up on your events for your page or your group and other places as well. Um, and making sure to create the event right as well to help amplify if you need more people or if you want email signups. Um, you can also send an email blast. That is a great way to share the news if you have an email list um, and even sending reminders for that um, through email too. Like, hey, looking forward to our tree planting, planting tomorrow. Make sure that you have your gloves and you bring this and that. We're looking forward to seeing you. Can remind people, especially students or younger people or anybody who has a hard time maybe remembering what's going on with everything. Um, recruiting and managing volunteers. So event platforms such as Eventbrite, et cetera, that we already talked about, using social media and um, connecting with other partners are really important. Um, ongoing maintenance and project management. That's always a question that we get with ideas for us is how are we going to continue these projects together? So we need to um, be able to keep them uh, an organized list of action items and notes of who's going to be doing what, right? And making sure that if it's a tree planting, who's gonna to continue to water the plants? If it's a community garden, who is in, in turn in charge of that community garden to take it over? Um, and also um, keeping in mind um, uh, the outcomes and uh, things like that. We're trying to um, approach our session where we can have more of a conversation. Um, so we're going to just kind of speed through this. Um, 
Also resources and tips, ask for donations for sustainable businesses. You know who's the best at doing that is Ms. Kristen Anderson. She's awesome at getting different supplies and things that we need. You can just ask companies if you need certain craft supplies or whatever, um, just reach out to them. Lowe's and Home Depot also have grant programs where you can get um, gift cards and things like that. Um, and partner with organizations on eco action projects, like we mentioned. So a chance to apply for funding. So um, thanks to the generous team at the Bolo Foundation, we're offering um, some funds for eco action projects. So you can go to ideasforus.org slash climate week and you can apply for our um, uh, small grants program. Um, you can submit an application. The application is online. You just basically fill it out on the website and then we will review them and choose um, from a select few the different projects that we are looking for. I would definitely recommend have a couple different options. So have a small option, maybe $100, a larger option, maybe like 250, 300, 400, and then maybe a thousand dollar project um, to be able to request funds. So we can kind of choose, so we can get as many projects done as possible and making sure that we have like a wide variety of different projects that will get funded. Um, we will review the applicants and then we will send an email to those with a confirmation or a denial of the project. And we'll totally talk to you about that of, of why um, we can always fundraise in different opportunities or maybe we can create a proposal together and we can go after funding from multiple sources. Since our, um, our funding pool is, is a little bit small, um, we would love to see other organizations being um, a part of the project and being able to donate and we can give some um, ideas of who could do that maybe too. Um, and then ideas for us will aid in project management um, and Volo will supply the funds. So basically we would be there to help you make sure that the project happens and that it's in a timely fashion and all of that. Um, helping with any details along the way in planning. Um, and then at the end, a final report template will be sent to you and you can basically fill it out and say um, what went well or what didn't go well about um, your project. So we would love to see that as a um, uh, as a uh, show of the job well done, right? So the requirements is that you must have a project lead and a clear idea of the project at hand, um, must take photos or videos of all projects um, so we can promote it, must tag ideas for us in Volo Foundation and social media posts so we can also amplify your, your project and the budget um, cannot include labor, it's materials only. And it's from about 50 to $1,000 is the range of what we would like to see some proposals on. So um, you can go on over to ideasforus.org slash climate week and check that out. And we would love to have you apply for funding. Um, if you have any questions, you can also email us at admin at ideasforus.org. And we would love to answer any questions that you ha may have about that. So um, just going on to the next sec session about um, uh, questions and answers. If you have anything that you would like to ask questions about, if you would like to come on camera and to share your voice on some ideas that you may have in, um, for eco action projects in your area, we would love to talk about what you have in mind um, or some ideas that you might have that um, you, you might need some clarification on. So would anybody like to come on camera and ask any questions for their related projects? Awesome, Marcos. Yeah, get us started. Hi, how are you this afternoon? Good, thank you. My name is Marcos Pena. I'm the CEO board chair for uh, Green Planet Water Raised Restorations Incorporated. Um, we, we take on pretty large projects. Uh, currently, we have a project we're doing where um, we're building aqua drones. They're basically uh, solar powered electric boats that can clean the water. And I don't just mean clean like the plastic out, we're actually cleaning the water. We can take out the heavy metals, the algaes, uh, any pollutants that are in there, any chemicals, uh, any byproducts that really shouldn't be there. Um, we find the waters are just, they're, pr they're getting pretty bad. I I'm from Florida, I've been here since 1961 when I was born. And uh, the waterways have significantly gotten worse. So we're taking on some large projects. We're also working People like uh, Kansas City, St. Louis, um, we're working with the Navajo Nation Water Project. But that aside, we also like to do some fun local events too, or we're trying to, we're just, we're just getting started at this. Um, so we do wanna do some um, beach cleanups and, and some other things where we can get uh, more people involved so they can learn about the environment. Um, currently I work with like uh, Lisa at, at Hallandale Beach where I'm from. 
and uh, we were doing some dune projects and that kind of thing. Um, she's been really helpful in, in organizing that. I kind of want to be able to take over some of that so it's not all on her all the time. Um, so th this, this is the type of thing that's helpful uh, in learning how to do this. Again, I'm 60 years old, uh, so the whole social media thing and, and getting people involved, you know, that's definitely your guys' stuff. Um, by the way, I just want to say uh, go Knights, my daughter, just graduated mm -hmm. UCF uh, December computer science from Burnett Honors College. So uh, really support the programs up there and love the college. Um, you guys know you live in a beautiful area up there. We want to keep it that way. There's a lot of things that are going on in government um, where they're trying to take a lot of the uh, nice areas and they're trying to plow them over for housing. Uh, so we got to keep everybody working on your uh, local commissioners and anybody you know in politics and you know, try to keep them to, to let the environment have a chance out there. Uh, but as far as some of the smaller projects go, um, in order like to do uh, 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 these, these, these beach projects where we go and we clean the beaches, uh, we're, we're looking to, I think the best way to go, if I'm not mistaken, would be to buy buckets and like the pickup tools and that kind of thing. Is that Am I, am I getting on there? Because like we didn't want to bring in plastic bags for, for people sure. to clean up plastic with. That just seemed kind of kind of defeating the purpose. Um, Another fun idea is to repurpose soil bags or mulch bags if you have them. We have a lot of those because of our community garden builds. Um, so we repurpose our old bags for trash bags. Um, but yeah, buckets are definitely the way to go. Um, and trash pickers, usually the Keep Brevard or Orlando Beautiful that provides plastic bags, which is unfortunate. So I would buy the buckets and then borrow the trash pickers. Um, also, Kimberly asks if you can please repeat where you work, Marcos. Um, we're Green Planet Waterways, Waterways Restorations Incorporated. We're a nonprofit 501c3. Um, basically, we're a group of people. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, a solar wind geothermal engineer and environmental scientist. Um, years ago, I was a, uh, an audio engineer, worked with a lot of famous rock bands, that kind of thing, a lot of symphonies. Um, and on our board, we do have a, a rock star and we do have people that are in education. We have people on our board from all walks of life. Um, we, we do all, all the local stuff. I mean, you know, go to all the commission meetings, uh, um, we have people that, that are friends with Nancy Pelosi. So we're really out there trying all different levels um, of advocacy. Um, I just became today a, 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 South, a, a South Florida um, climate ambassador through, through one of the programs here. So like I said, trying, trying all, all aspects, but uh, I'm basically, a, like I said, I come out of the scientific, the scientific realm. Even when I was working with the rock stars, I'm the guy behind the scenes. We do the audio, the lighting, the video. I'm not used to being the guy that has to come out here and talk to people and and to uh, um, and, and and to to be the forefront. And in this uh, in this particular company, I am. Um, so I'm I'm kind of learning as I go here, and uh, I'm learning about the social media, and learning how to stay away from the uh, negatives. It seems like when I first started on the social media, I, I would start off in a positive thing, and then I would get drawn off into these negatives and be kind of like a rabbit hole there's really nowhere to go once it goes bad so kind of learning about the social media and, and uh you know we're, we're getting better at that um but like i said we really wanted to do community outreach where we get the kids involved in programs um we were opening a, a theater this year a 4d theater that's pretty much was going to show a lot of environmental biopic filming that kind of thing as, awesome. re as well as regular filming and we were going to do a vr virtual reality a zoo and aquarium along with the virtual reality playground we thought that would get kids in and then we could use propaganda and we could really like you know get the kids involved and and uh we could kind of win them over to the environment um yeah, that's, well, COVID, awesome. that's obviously put on hold so now we're looking for other ways to involve and get the kids like you know like i say involved in the environment so that when uh when they're adults and they're making the decisions they're going to make the right ones as opposed to most of the people my age who uh made the wrong decisions they went with the gas and, and oil companies and and big fast cars and big motors and pretty much polluted the atmosphere and uh, so we're trying to find ways to get the kids involved so when they come up they'll know they have an electric car not a gas powered car you know just little stuff how to save water you know less than three percent of the water we have on the planet is a uh, drinkable right and so you know if we have companies that are using that water now for all kind of purposes other than drinking mm -hmm. so we're 
you know, we're trying to find ways to uh, basically to make it better. And, and yeah, anything, absolutely. You know, that we can learn from you guys, we're, we're going we're gonna to try to do that. Great. And, you know, we would love to share your events and different stuff that you have going on on our social media. So please go ahead and email me anything that you would like to have us advertise for you, because it sounds like you're doing really awesome work. We definitely align with your mission. Um, so please go ahead and let me know if there's anything that we can do to support you or share your event. Um, we do have to close out here in a couple minutes. So are there any last questions? Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for coming today. This has been such a great event. I loved hearing from you all. I'm so inspired that there are so many incredible people out in the world that are doing this work for our planet. You know, I really feel good about it. These are the kinds of events that have, make me have hope for our future. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Awesome. Thank you so much. You can check us out on, on Facebook, Ideas for Us um orlando that's where we're most active here um also we have a branch in tampa bay um at, and at the ucf campus so you can um, check out those different um ideas first branches on facebook we have all of our events there please email kristen um with her email in the chat or admin at ideasforus.org and we look forward to talking with you all please apply for funding we would love to fund a project with you so thank you all so much and we will see you guys at our next event thank you Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Thank you. Yes, awesome. Thank you. I just put it in the chat, but I'm with the Everglades Foundation. Um, so we're a nonprofit down in Miami, but I'm actually in Orlando. So I work with a lot of the schools and community partners. We've done a few partnerships with City of Orlando, Keep Orlando Beautiful. So uh, definitely interested in uh, seeing what we could do. So I'll send you an email at some point. Yes, please. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I look forward to hearing from you and you too, Marcos, and anybody else that wants to talk about making a project happen. We're here for you. All right. Thank you all. Awesome. Bye, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Do you know how to stop recording? Thank you guys. Let me stop recording. Yeah.